Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to capital projects to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to know when more videos like this are coming. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're looking at another Kurzgesagt video called What if you detonated a nuclear bomb in the Mariana Trench? <laughs> oh, this should be good. So my prediction is not a lot. Mariana Trench is a massive fault line. Even the most powerful nuclear weapons is tiny. The energy released is tiny compared to the energy released by an earthquake. Though, knowing Kurz Gazat, they're probably going to do something crazy and say, what if we put all the nukes down there and made this one massive explosion? <laughs> Let's find out. What would happen if we detonated humanity's most powerful nuclear weapon at the deepest point of the ocean? For sure, tsunamis hundreds of meters high would destroy coastal cities, earthquakes would level countries, new vol... I don't think so. Even with all of the nukes in the world, I don't, you're not going to get that much of an energy release. Volcanoes would bring us nuclear winter. <laughs> Maybe even Earth could be ripped apart or thrown out of orbit. Well, almost. Maybe I should do a video later on how much energy it would actually take to shatter the Earth. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Currently, Earth's deepest known point is inside the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is a very deep valley right at the edge of two tectonic plates that looks like an upside-down mountain. It reaches a depth of about 11 kilometers, almost three times deeper than the dark grave of the Titanic. It's one of the last places on Earth for humans to explore. Pitch black and under a thousand atmospheres of pressure, it's a relatively pristine environment thanks to the absence of humans. A great place for... Interesting point. I mean, you'd have to put the nuke in some type of uh, pressure vessel. I don't know of any weapon that can be under a thousand atmospheres. <laughs> At least not with some modifications to the uh, device that houses the warhead. Our nuclear test. We'll use the most powerful nuclear bomb humans have ever exploded, the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, or SAR bomber. Its explosion was so massive that its shockwave traveled around the Earth three times and its mushroom cloud stretched 56 kilometers into the sky. Its shockwave was strong enough to destroy everything in a thousand square kilometers, its fireball hot enough to burn the rubble. Bombs like this release such an enormous amount of energy at once that they could boil away an entire lake. And if we set off a nuclear bomb... Depends on the size of the lake in the Mariana Trench, that's exactly what happens. Let's pull the trigger. So the SAR bomb, um, the biggest one detonated was 50 megatons. To get a sense of scale, the one on Hiroshima were on the order of was about 15 or so kilotons. So this one is well over a thousand times more powerful than that. In the first few microseconds, the nuclear fuel undergoes its chain reaction and explodes with the power of 50 megatons of TNT. A blinding flash of light illuminates the... One thing I will point out is one version of it was actually built with 100 megatons, but it was never detonated. Darkness of the trench for the first time in history. The heat of the explosion produces <laughs> wow. a cavity, a flaming bubble of water vapor radioactive nuclei and the remains of very unlucky fish. The bubble grows quickly as it vaporizes the water around it. The pressure of the bubble is immense, plowing outwards as if there's nothing in the way, sending off a shock wave that will be felt by seismic stations and whales around the world. And then, almost as fast as it emerges, it stops. On the surface of the Earth, this fireball bubble would grow to 10 kilometers the second after it's detonated as the atmosphere barely puts up a fight to hold it back. But the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. With 11 kilometers of water overhead, being in the Mariana Trench is like being crushed by a hydraulic press from every direction. 
Here, a second after the detonation, our bubble is about a kilometer across, when, oddly enough, it starts to shrink. The bubble overextends itself. Difference between a thousand atmosphere and one. That'll do it. Losing pressure as it expands until the water turns it back, recompressing it. The tug of war between the fiery death bubble and water goes back and forth a few times, the bubble shrinking and growing until eventually the bubble loses for good. The pressure. That's a great animation, but yeah, there's just so much water and so much pressure, it won't last long. Around it is too great, and turbulent water begins to chop it up. It becomes something like the underwater equivalent of a mushroom cloud. Here we have the return of the green goo. <laughs> you wouldn't get green goo. <laughs> As it disintegrates into many smaller hot and radioactive bubbles drifting upwards. And as our mighty destructive blast rises to the surface, it does basically nothing. Just a small wave and a bubbling plume of radioactive warm water in the Pacific. No. Nope. It would just look like regular water. The only difference is it would be slightly warmer than normal water. And the heat would cool off very quickly. The, it, the ocean a massive heat sink and the radiation is going to get so diluted and mixed into everything you're not going to notice much tsunami will wash away japan or california although boats and whales in the area might have a bad time yeah the radioactive fallout will be diluted into the pacific after a few days although a fair amount of radioactive water and salt makes it to the atmosphere where it collects and then rains down again even if the wind blows the fallout directly towards the Philippines, the worst of it probably happens over the oceans. <laughs> but clearly, the real de not gonna make Godzilla. Danger comes from our explosion triggering earthquakes and volcanoes, right? Even if we detonated yeah. the bomb right in the trench at the exact point where tectonic plates touch, probably not. The explosion would vaporize a part of the sea floor and turn a lot of sand into glass, but most of the energy goes into the water, not seismic waves. Earthquakes are already quite common at tectonic plate boundaries, and earthquakes with as much seismic energy as our bomb happen a few times a year without triggering any sort of apocalypse. But maybe it will affect the Earth's orbit. Since no mass is taken away... Yes. They're right about the, uh, the earthquake uh, thing. Um, nuclear weapons are tiny compared to the energy released from, from earthquakes. Um, and the interesting thing on such a, re such a reactive plate, a major fault line, there's always little teeny tiny earthquakes going on there anyway. So that, that will also help to cancel out the uh, tectonic effects of this explosion or added to the earth our orbit is completely unaffected also there have been well over a thousand nuclear tests in the last 70 years and that didn't change our orbit so why would this time be different the strongest forces humanity can unleash are laughable compared to the forces of nature the planet is too big it doesn't care so what happens to us if we detonate and i actually think the mariana trench one that one, it reminds me of the movie Armageddon, where they drill <laughs> into an asteroid and try to split it in half with a nuke. Let me know if you want to see me look at that video. Clear weapon really deep in the ocean. Pretty much nothing. Did you know that every bird in our videos has an owner? <laughs> and that would appear to be the outro. So yes, um, I agree um, with this, that it's going to have very little impact. In fact, the impact for detonating a nuke under the Mariana Trench will be much less than even a nuclear test, let alone um, a nuclear attack on, on a populated area, because very little of the uh, fallout will actually hit the atmosphere compared to a, uh, a surface detonation or an airburst detonation. That's a that's a good point. I was a little disappointed though, but this is one of the, their older videos. I, I was wondering if they were gonna ask the question, how much energy if we would have put every every single nuke down there, but compared to the, the, the force of earthquakes and how much energy, how much pressure there is, it's still not gonna be as much as a major earthquake. <laughs> 
Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I'll see you next time.